In this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week of December 31st. We got all sorts of movement thanks to Disney Plus and Spider-Man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week of December 31st. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out a weekly article that analyzes the hottest selling comic books of the last 30 days based on volume of sales and movement. So like I like to do on Mondays, let's take a look at the list and see what's trending in the market. But before I get into the books, if you guys could drop me a like or a comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. Uh, but let us get into this article here today. And we got a very cool list. Of course, a lot of movement is based off of speculation coming on Disney Plus, a lot of movement based on speculation with the Spider-Verse, but a lot of movement overall in the market. Of course, this article is written by Matt Tuck this week, so I will put a link in the description if you want to do further reading. But the first book we got to talk about in the number five spot is actually going to be The Punisher, number one, which is actually new to the list. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this is the first issue of The Punisher ongoing series, a book that came out in 1987, written by by Mike Barron and drawn by Klaus Janssen. And this, of course, to me, is one of the most iconic Punisher covers I think there is in all of comic books. This one brings back the member berries for me. I remember being a kid growing up in the early 90s in comic book stores and looking at this particular Punisher run. I loved the Punisher back then. And one of the things I think is really interesting about the Punisher character is like we kind of forget in the comic book community that the Punisher at one time was absolutely one of the most A-tier superhero characters there were in comic books. And I feel like over the years, his star has kind of waned a little bit, at least as far as being one of the focal points of Marvel comic books. But I think that that might actually start to change because it definitely feels like we might be getting, you know, some kind of version of the John Bernthal Punisher in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, of course, the speculation for this book is one of the reasons why it's showing up on the list this week is that, you know, coming off the heels of Hawkeye, knowing that we got Kingpin in it, coming off the heels of Spider-Man, knowing that we got, you know, the Charlie Cox version of Daredevil, this is giving people a lot of hope that the Punisher is soon going to be making his way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe universe as well, at least the John Bernthal version. So a lot of people are excited for the Punisher keys, a lot of people starting to spec on those things, and for a lot of people, they don't have the budget to get that ASM number 129, so they're looking to this book right here, a great collector issue if you are a fan of the Punisher, and one that to me is a very iconic cover. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there actually is a 9.9 .9 on the census. Fair market value says 300, but who knows what that would actually go for. Uh, but the 9.8 fair market value is actually around the $300 range. 30 day moving average is 315. Of course, just because it's on the list this week doesn't mean that the prices or fair market values are necessarily going up. It just means that there's a lot of volume of sales. A lot of people looking to buy this thing or sell this thing or move this thing. So there's that velocity in the market. A lot of people are excited about this book and it is moving for that reason. So this book right here, selling around that $300 range, Punisher number one, fifth hottest comic of the week. All right, let's go on now to the fourth hottest comic of the week. And the fourth hottest comic of the week is actually going to be Star Wars number 42, which is actually new to the list, but in the 76th spot. And what is the significance of this book? Well, you guys know this, of course, is the first appearance of Boba Fett in comic book form. This is also the first full appearance of Yoda in comic book form, a book that was written by Archie Goodwin and Danny Fingeroth back in 1980. And this book right here, of course, is getting really hot right now, coming off of the heels of the book of Boba Fett, which made its premiere on Disney Plus just this last week. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love The Mandalorian, so I was very, very excited to find out that they were going to be doing a book of Boba Fett TV show, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where the show goes from here. And this book right here is a really interesting one because of the fact that it is the first appearance of Boba Fett, you know, in comic book form and the one that the market tends to gravitate to. But if you guys have been watching all my videos, you'll know that I did a undervalued key comic book video with Como Comic Books and Bry's Comic Books. And one of the books that Bry brought to the table is actually the Marvel Magazine, which is the, you know, true first appearance of these characters, but you know, I don't know, the market is the market and they're gonna decide what books they wanna get. You know, a lot of people have the biases towards the oversized format, which I can actually understand. For So for whatever reason, the market has really gravitated to this book right here. Also, it's kind of nice that Boba Fett is on the cover for this one. You know, a lot of people are biased towards their covers. So this seems to be, you know, the quote unquote, the winner book as far as what the market dictates and what the market wants to get their hands on. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you guys had your choice to get that Marvel magazine or this one right here, 
which would you rather have in your collection? But as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there are 9.8 selling fair market value around the $3,500 range, except you can see right here, 30 day moving average is hovering around the $3,800 range. So this is definitely a book that has taken a little bit of an uptick thanks to the debut of the show. And it'll be interesting to see where this book goes week to week. But now that it is the fourth hottest comic on this list, you know that a lot of people are transacting with it. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest comic book of the week. And the third hottest comic book of the week is actually Daredevil number 131, which is actually new to the list, coming in at the 71 spot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this is the first appearance of the villain known as Bullseye. Now, Bullseye, of course, is one of Daredevil's most iconic villains, maybe the biggest street-level villain there is, only second to Kingpin, who we will talk about in a second. But this, of course, is a book that came out in 1976, written by Marv Wolfman. And like I mentioned with the Punisher book, you know, we're coming off the heels of the Hawkeye show, and the big reveal that we got in that show was that Kingpin, the Vincent D'Onofrio version of the Kingpin, was actually now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or, you know, at least we think that it's the same one. Maybe it's not the same one. Maybe it's a variant, but we don't need to go there. But regardless, what that suggests to a lot of people and a lot of speculators is that Bullseye might be on the table. Now, if you know your Daredevil Netflix, you would know that they actually started to plant the seeds to have Bullseye maybe show up in like a season four or season five or something like that, uh, but they never quite got it there. So a lot of people thinking that, you know, if Kingpin is now here, if Charlie Cox is now here, uh, at sooner or later, we're going to be getting Bullseye. And that means that this is going to be a book that absolutely takes a spike in the market. This is actually a book that I had luckily acquired for myself just a few weeks ago. So I was really happy to get my hands on this thing. And if we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there are 9.8s on the census, only about 86 uh, that sell fair market value around the $3,900 range. Although it doesn't seem like there has been a lot of sales in the last 30 days. So if we kind of go down the list here, we'll see a 9.6 fair market value is 1450, but you can see the 30 day moving average is 2150. So this book has definitely already taken that big uh, jump in the market. 9.4 fair market value, 775. 30 day moving, actually now 1,066. So definitely a lot of people making moves on this book. You know, the prices for this thing are going up and who knows what kind of ceiling this could actually hit when and if we ever get a confirmation that Bullseye is actually in the MCU. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest comic of the week. And the second hottest comic of the week is one of my personal favorites. This is actually gonna be Spider-Gwen, number one, up 46 spots, now sitting in the number 28 spot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the first ongoing title for the character known as Spider-Gwen or Ghost Spider, however you would like to refer to her. But of course, this is a book written by Jason Latour that came out in 2015. And this is a book that I feel like a lot of people have really started to talk about in these last couple months or so. I made mention of this book, you know, in some of my spec videos. I talked about how I would love to start my collection with this book if I was, you know, starting on $100 budget today. I think other people like Bry and Como, et cetera, have all made mention of this book being a good investment. And generally speaking, it feels like there's a lot of consensus around this thing because of the fact that, you know, we all know that Spider-Gwen is a really important character. A lot of people are excited about her because she's going to be making her return in the Spider-Verse 2 film, which is set to come out later in this year. And on top of all that, due to the success of Spider-Man No Way Home, there's now a lot of rumors that, you know, there's talks in Hollywood of people trying to get a Emma Stone Spider-Gwen movie greenlit or at least put in development because, you know, a lot of people now are trying to see Andrew Garfield as like, you know, let's continue his storyline with Spider-Man. And then that got people thinking, hey, well, what if they bring back Emma Stone, who's a huge actress, and they start to do like a live action version of Spider-Gwen. So if they actually do do that, you know, all of those books like Edge of Spider-Verse 2 and this book right here, Spider-Gwen number one, are definitely going to be extremely hot books in the market. And that's one of the reasons why I think that this book is so hot as of this week. So as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there actually are also a couple 9.9s on the census. Uh, there's only two here. Fair market value for this for, suggests that it'd be $2,400, but of course there haven't been any sales for those, so we don't actually know what they would go for. But you can see 9.8s fair market value was around the $100 range, 30-day moving average now at the $135 range, and a lot of sales to boot. I mean, a lot of people going for this book overall. And you know, 135 to me actually still seems like a pretty good entry point for a book like this. This is her first solo title. This is her first ongoing. Still a great cover. I mean, I love the Edge of the Spider-Verse cover, but this is kind of her in her full iconic costume. You know, if we think about a book like this and we think about other books that have their first ongoing, like Wolverine number one, I feel like there's opportunity to get to a certain ceiling for a book like this. So Spider-Gwen number one, second hottest comic of the week. 
Which brings us now to the hottest comic of the week. And the hottest comic of the week is actually going to be Amazing Spider-Man number four, up 25 spots, sitting in the number 22 slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course you guys know, this is the first appearance of Cindy Moon, aka Silk. Now, this is a book that came out in 2014, written by Dan Slott, and there have been a lot of rumors about Silk. A lot of people, you know, in the media sphere have talked about that there's a Silk movie in development, people thinking that Olivia Wilde was set to direct something like this. Silk has been a very popular character, you know, in current Marvel comic books. A lot of people love collecting the Silk covers, like the hip-hop variants and things like that. So Silk has really captivated the comic collecting market, and this has been a very hot book as a result of it. Now, as to why it's currently moving in the market, well, I think that this is a chain reaction due to the success, once again, of Spider-Man No Way Home. A lot of people are now excited and looking forward to, you know, what's going to happen with the Spider-Verse film. A lot of people are excited about the prospects of Sony building out their Spider-Verse. So a lot of people are anticipating that Silk is going to make her appearance on the silver screen in some way, shape, or form. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, we'll see that there actually is a 10.0 on the census. There is actually only one here. Who really knows what that would sell for today? Fair market value has that around 825 but I got to think that you know there's going to be a super silk fan that would totally be willing to pay more than that but 9.9 .9 selling fair market value around the 525 dollar range but of course let's just talk about the 9.8s 4000 on the census fair market value for that is around 400 dollars 30 day moving average however is only 327 so it feels like there's been a little bit of a correction as we can see here from the graph earlier in the year so it feels like now maybe this has reached a new floor where a lot of people are wanting to buy back into this book that's one of the reasons it's kind of heated up in the market, so people making moves on this thing. If you ask me, $400 for a book like this, First Appearance of Silk, actually is a pretty good price overall because who knows what the potential of a character like this may be. If Silk could one day grow to be even half as popular as Miles Morales or Gwen Stacy, that's definitely a book that could easily reach the $1,000 range. Anyways, that is all for this video. Those were Go Collect's hottest comics of the week. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Are you guys hunting some of these things? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.